Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. If you've been on the channel for some time now, you might remember a few of my AFK guides, which are over a year old at this point. And with more and more great content coming to old school RuneScape, I thought it might be the perfect time to make an updated guide for all of the great AFK methods you can do in the game that need little or no attention whatsoever. For every new subscriber and the like this video gets, my puppy Moneda will get a kiss. So, go ahead, we'll give you two seconds. Alright, thank you. Before we start this video, it is very important to mention that the term AFK is universally used in Old School RuneScape as doing something that requires low effort and only a few clicks per minute. We will discuss a couple of methods that actually let you step away for several minutes at a time. Before we start, I want to give out a few honorable mentions. I'm not going to talk about these in the main video because you need a considerable amount of attention to do them, but will serve as good alternatives in case you want to do these activities. We have Zaya Runecrafting, which is the most AFK way to train the skill, but you still need to click every few seconds. For construction, all we really have is repairing braziers at Wintertoad and handing out long and curved bones at Dargis Khan. For mining, we have crashed stars, but finding them on your own is pretty tedious, and if the star miner CC finds your star, it will be gone in a matter of minutes. Also, recently there was a method involving the Duke's succulent salts, but it caps at a miserable 10k experience per hour. And finally, even though fire making is absolutely brain dead, both Winter Toad and Burning Logs requires constant clicks. At the time of making this video, the second part of Forestry proposes the addition of bonfires, which is a slower but actual way to train fire making AFK. Like most of my guides, I will move down in skill order, and we are starting with melee. We are heading to the Gargoyle segment in the Slayer Tower with full Guffins equipped, and by taking a few super combat potions, you can AFK for upwards of 10 minutes until the gargoyles are not aggressive anymore. You will only need to look at your screen to pick up the loot and high elk valuable items such as rune armor, and of course to sip more super combat potions when your stats need another boost. With the release of Sins of the Father, the City of Dark Mayor was open to players, where we can find Virewatch Sentinels for tons of melee experience and the chances at the Blood Shard. Equip your highest prayer-enhancing gear such as Proselyte, Devout Boots, and the Ring of the Gods to mention a few, and you can stay there indefinitely because there's an altar right in front of the bank. I recommend the Ground Items plugin for you to be notified when you get a Blood Shard as a drop, and don't forget your Noble Outfit in case you want to bank. As much as I hate to admit it, the Nightmare Zone is actually one of the best places to AFK train, because as long as your absorption potions allow it, you can stay there for up to 25 minutes at a time if you have the logout timer set correctly. If you want to be slightly more efficient, only a few clicks per minute are needed to drink more overload potions, and of course keep your HP low with a Locator Orb or a Rock Cake. It's not going to provide any profit, but it will speed up your gains. Thanks to the Phantom Muspa released along Secrets of the North, the Venator Bow is one of the newest weapons to make their way into old school RuneScape. After charging it with Ancient Essence, arrows shot from it can bounce up to three times to other targets if you are in a multi-combat area. If you're wealthy enough to own one of these, take it to the Catacombs of Corrend to kill monsters such as Bloodvelds and Abbey Demons, and you will only need to click on your screen to attack more monsters and to drink Ranging and Prayer Potions. Although there's no real way to AFK train Prayer, the closest we have is using the Bone Crusher and the Ash Sanctifier. I mean, you're getting Prayer experience by not even training Prayer, right? You get these items both from Mauritania and the current Diary respectively, and the hard tier of each one will give you half the prayer experience for each bone and ash, while the elite tier grants you the full experience. Make sure to take these items on you when training at all times. For something that's actually AFK, we jump to magic, and the first method is the lunar spell called Plank Make. Not only will you be getting amazing experience per hour, but by turning mahogany logs into planks you'll be making a ton of money with like 5 clicks every cycle. It could be a little faster, but of course we are focusing on time away from the screen. Be advised that you can do this with any type of log, but Mahogany will always be the most profitable of the bunch. Another magic-related method that won't be as generous with cash but still great experience per hour is String Jewelry. The difference between this and Plank Make is that even though String Jewelry will be pretty tight on margins, it grants more experience per hour because the automatic casts are faster than Plank Make. I'm a huge fan of this method because it's what I used from 80 to 99 back when I was on my way to maxing, and I will never not recommend this amazing spell. Because there's no true way to AFK rune crafting and construction, we jump straight to agility, and just like prayer, we will be AFKing this skill by not training agility at all. As we all know, barbarian fishing offers strength and agility experience along with, well, fishing experience. And some people opt to get 99 fishing before starting the agility grind to get some of the early levels out of the way. 
Be advised that this is going to be incredibly slow, but it's your best AFK alternative. Herbler is pretty cool because we have certain potions that can be made out of a 4 dose potion and stackable ingredients in your inventory, leading to 27 items to be processed per cycle. These potions include Stamina, Extended Anti-Fire, Anti-Venom, Forgotten Brew, and Extended Super Anti-Fire potions. Make sure to see what the best option for your budget is, but I personally recommend sticking to Staminas and Anti-Venoms for the best bang for your buck. Thieving has some great methods that don't require a lot of attention, but are pretty click intensive. To truly do this in the most AFK way possible, we are going to one tick the Summer Sorcerer's Garden when all of the ghosts are set. I will leave a quick guide for this in the description below, but once ready, you need to click once every 30 or 45 seconds to steal fruit, and then squish it into a beer of glass. So then you can hand it in for tons of experience, and I wish I knew about this method sooner, so definitely give it a go. For crafting, our best option is glass blowing. It's a relatively slow process for which you can make 27 items per inventory, and the great thing about it is that it is available to you at level 1 if you make beer glasses. Realistically though, I would start doing this at level 46 to make unpowered orbs, as they are the only item that will be profitable as of the time of making this video. You can also make lantern lenses and light orbs at higher levels, but you will lose a bit of GP. I also did this on my way to 99. One of the most iconic AFK skills is fletching. Because quite frankly, the entire process from 1 to 99 can be done at a bank without paying too much attention. All you need is a knife and locks in your inventory, and to make the best long bow you are able to fletch according to your level. Short bows won't be profitable, which is why I always recommend sticking to maple, yew, and magic longbows. This also requires around 5 clicks per cycle and will make you some decent cash without effort. Slayer is a tricky one and I have a quick 2 for 1 when it comes to AFK in this skill. If you get a task in a place where monsters are aggressive, all you need to do is go there with protection prayers and auto retaliate turned on. If the monsters are not aggressive, take a cannon with you, and once monsters are attacked they will launch towards you for which you can also simply have auto retaliate on and completely AFK your Slayer task. This will also be painfully slow, but not as terrible. For Hunter, we are going to start with birdhouses. Now, I know what you're gonna say, birdhouses are technically not AFK, but you only have to dedicate one minute of attention to your screen as you do it, and just wait for another hour for them to be done. Technically speaking, birdhouses are the best effective experience per hour for the skill, so it doesn't hurt to grab all of your tools for a quick run per hour while you do something else in the game or in real life. For something actually AFK, we are going to the maniacal monkey hunting room in the Monkey Madness 2 cave. Grab your crook Grigri and head north after climbing down the stairs. With a bunch of bananas in your inventory, along with banana baskets and bones to bananas, get on top of one of the demonic gorillas and click on the rocks to start hunting for the ugly monkeys. They take a good while to fall for the trap, but they will give you a whopping 1000 experience each. If I ask you how to AFK mining, you are probably going to think of the Motherload mine, but that still requires a lot of attention. Instead, we are going to go to Guardians of the Rift, where you can AFK mine the Guardian Remains for the duration of the entire game. This of course can be cut short if those degenerate Ironmen don't place cells at the beginning of the game, and even though this will be pretty slow, it's better than coping at other places if mining is not your cup of tea. Also locked behind Sins of the Father, we can go to the Dailed Essence Mine in order to get the Dailed Essence for runecrafting. Now, you might be like, well, we're not going for runecrafting experience, but actually, the process of getting the item is fairly AFK. You will need to click on the glowing rocks, and they cycle roughly every minute, which is pretty generous considering other methods we have seen so far. This will of course be a great benefit for runecrafting gains in the future, so two birds with one stone. An AFK method you will see in pretty much every video like this will be mining Amethyst at the Mining Guild. This is great in terms of profit and the chances of the pet, as Amethyst will always stay relevant because of how powerful darts and arrows are. If you're unlucky you can be mining a single rock for more than one minute, but it's exactly why we are here. Remember that experience per hour here is atrocious, especially at level 92, but it's a great activity for you to do for tons of downtime in between. Smithing is a fairly fast and simple process either at the blast furnace or anvils, but we are taking this to the extreme and sticking to cannonballs with a regular ammo mold so you can make an astonishing 4 balls per steel bar. This is historically one of the slowest actions in the entire game, for whatever reason, and if you want some extremely AFK training and a relatively good amount of money for almost zero effort, this is the activity you have been looking for. For fishing, we have three methods. The first one features fishing Karamlin with a fishing barrel, which will allow you to AFK for twice as long as you wait for the barrel to fill up and then your inventory. All you have to do next is teleport to a bank of your choice, go back to Musa Point via Fairy Ring, and then continue fishing until you hit your level or profit goal. 
you can even try it without a fishing barrel because banking and getting back here is pretty quick and is not going to be a huge issue. With an oily fishing rod, fishing bait, a hammer and your ice gloves equipped, you can go to more old wreck after achieving a fire cape to AFK infernal eels. Simply click on the fishing spots around the arena and wait for a full inventory to then use a hammer on them to get some interesting loot. This includes stockle, lava scale shards and onyx bolt tips. Experience per hour and profit are not going to be crazy, but as pretty much every AFK method on the list, we are simply looking for low effort gains. An extremely similar method can be done at Zulandra, but this time we are looking to take a fishing rod, fishing bait and a knife in your inventory to then start fishing them at the poison swamp. Once you get some eels, use your knife on them to get Zulra scales, and the cool part about this is that you're also going to get some cooking experience for dissecting the eels. This is definitely one of the slowest methods on the list, but great to do it if you have some time to kill. And speaking of cooking, this skill is great for AFK because that's literally all you do. Take whatever profitable fish you want to cook at a cooking range, click on it, and wait for your whole inventory to be processed. I recommend the Rogue's Den, the Hosadius Kitchen, and for all of you Giga Chats who have completed Dragon Slayer 2, there's no better way to do this than the Myths Guild. Don't forget your cooking gauntlets, and I recommend items such as monkfish, karambwan, and sharks. Another 2 for 1 comes for woodcutting. We are looking at magic and redwood trees at the woodcutting guild. With the release of forestry you might be like, okay, but why the woodcutting guild? Well, because forestry events cannot spawn here, it gives us less things to be distracted by. And with a new timer for all of the trees to deplete as soon as you start chopping them, it guarantees a few minutes of AFK every cycle. Just be aware that the profit per hour will be atrocious for magics and literally zero for redwoods as it's much better to drop all your loot. And finally we have farming. Just like birdhouses for hunter, this time we will be doing one tree run every day for us to gain massive amounts of experience relative to our level by dedicating not more than 20 minutes to the skill per day. Remember that you will be losing a lot of money by doing this, but it's much better than doing your farm runs every hour which need a lot more attention. One tree per run is all you need to get level 99 in the most AFK way possible. Boys and girls of all ages, that's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and for making it this far. If you did, leave a comment below with your favorite AFK method and how you do it. If you include the word moneda in your comment, you will be entered in a bond giveaway for which we will draw a random winner on Friday's stream. A massive thank you to all my channel members who make this YouTube thing possible as I feed my starving Mexican family. You have no idea how much your support means to us. If you would like to be a part of this list of legends, click the join button below to support this channel monetarily and receive a ton of cool perks in the videos, in the live streams and of course in the Discord. Stay tuned for the next video, where I will show you how to achieve level 99 woodcutting in the most up-to-date fashion thanks to the release of forestry. Have an amazing day, have an amazing week, and I will see you then. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Peace.